Landfilling is among the most commonly applied waste management practices throughout the world. One of the main advantages of landfilling is the production of leachate and current treatments are costly and mostly inefficient. Management of leachate production is important due to its potential to cause contamination to ground and surface water. This presentation focuses on treating leachate in a cost-effective way through bioremediation. Microorganisms were isolated from landfill leachate and screened to determine their ability to remediate a wide range of compounds found in leachate. Selected isolates were inoculated into soil contained in a fixed bed column system. The column system was optimized and used for the treatment of landfill leachate over a 10-hour period. Although discharge limits were not achieved, bioremediation using selected microbial strains represents a cost-effective treatment option when compared to conventional methods. Further research is required to be conducted to further optimize the system. There are several advantages and disadvantages of this method. Several suggestions on how to improve the system will be provided at the end of this presentation. Generation of Municipal Solid Waste MSW continues to rise, largely due to industrial activities and global population increase. MSW disposal lead to the production of large volume of landfill leachate, LFL. The remediation of LFL is difficult due to the nature of some of its constituents and usually involved combination of both biological and physical chemical methods. Hence, this research focuses on treating leachate through bioremediation, which is a cost-effective manner. There are four methods involved in this research. First, site description and leachate collection. Second, isolation and characterization of bacterial isolate. Third, DNA extraction. Bacterial 16 SR RNA PCR, amplified RDNA restriction analysis, and phylogenetic analysis of isolates, and last but not least, preliminary study into the bioremediation potential of microbes. LFL used in this study was sourced from Powerstone Landfill Island. It consists of three fees, and the samples were collected from leachate tank LT and cell 11 C11. For DNA extraction, isolates were grown overnight in LB broth and 3 ml of culture was centrifuge at 13,000 RPM for 10 minutes. Then the supernatant was removed and the pellet was retained for DNA extraction. The extracted DNA were visualized by UV excitation after electrophoresis in 1% agarose gel. Bacterial 16 SR RNA genes were amplified with forward primer and reverse primer. All PCR reactions were conducted by using the GoTech G2 Pro Mega Kit. Amplified RDNA restriction analysis was carried out and the resulting DNA were resolved by electrophoresis on 3.5% high resolution agarose. To construct phylogenetic tree, sequences were analyzed using BLAST, search on NCBI, and were constructed by using Mega 7 sequence. Leachate composition and characterization. First, the BOD was varied in between 112 to 118 mg per litre. Next, the COD was ranging from 450 to 650 mg per litre. Thus, this landfill is in methanogenic phase. Next, the BOD COD ratio is 0 0.18 to 0 0.26. The ratio indicates the stabilization of the waste. The ratio range in between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 indicates the organic matter in the leachate is biodegradable. The leachate in this study is a stable leachate that may be difficult to treat biologically but react well to physiochemical treatment. Next, ammonia level is between 790 to 1010 mg per liter. Free treatment may be necessary to lower the COD and BOD level because high ammonia level decrease the effectiveness of biological treatment. Next, nitrate level is 89 to 120 mg per liter. The level can fluctuate depending on the concentration of ammonia due to the conversion of ammonia to nitrate during aerobic process in the landfill. Lastly, the leachate contains 0.4 mg per liter of phosphate. Nitrate and phosphate can cause both ground and surface water pollution as well as imbalance in the nutrient cycling and cause atrophication. Isolation and characterization of microbes During initial screening, 69 isolates were selected based on colony morphology, gram staining, oxidase test, and catalyst test. 
as the sodium level in the landfill nature is high, which had a mean average concentration of 696 mg per liter, the usage of highly tolerant microorganisms are important for survival of the isolates during the bioremediation process. From 69 candidate strains, only 40 highly tolerant isolates were able to grow on nutrient agar supplemented with 10% of sodium chloride. Then, from 40 isolates, only 15 isolates were able to grow in the presence of heavy metals tested at concentration less than or equal to 100 mg per liter. In particular, LCC32 able to grow on all 5 heavy metals such as copper, nickel, iron, cadmium and arsenic at concentration less than or equal to 100 mg per liter. Moreover, 15 isolates were resistant to ammonia, phosphate and nitrate at concentration of less than or equal to 100 mg per liter on nutrient agar. For example, LCT12, LCT33, LCC18, LCC19, and LCT33 were capable of growth at concentration of less than or equal to 100 mg per liter for all three compounds. Phylogenetic Analysis The selected isolates were identified as belonging to the phylum Firmicutes, Ethinobacteria, and Proteobacteria. It shows a slight reduction in final percentage removal of autoclave soil inoculated with microbial master mix because the autoclaving soil affecting its chemical properties, which is pH and the availability of macro compounds within the soil. The second trial is the optimization of the fixed bed system flow rate. Based on this table, the overall percentage removals at 5 ml per minute were 76% for ammonia, 64% for phosphate, and 36% for nitrate. The retention time of 5 ml per minute was 15 minutes, make it the optimum trail compared to 10 ml per minute, which take 35 minutes. The third trial is the overall bioremediation potential. The result shows that the concentration of ammonia contained in leachate reduced for 95%. For phosphate in leachate, the concentration was reduced by 67%. Next is the overall nitrate reduction, which comprises 63% of reduction. In conclusion, bioremediation is shown to be a good biological method for landfill leachate treatment. Landfill leachate from power stand in Ireland is in the methanogenic phase of decomposition and contains high level of COD, BOD, and also ammonia. Microorganisms isolated from leachate have the potential to utilize a range of heavy metal, ammonia, phosphate, and also nitrate. In the bioremediation process in this study, the microbial consortium used were capable of reducing 90% of ammonia, 67% of phosphate, followed by 63% of nitrate. My opinion on reflection of this study regarding bioremediation of landfill leachate. This study only fit for treating ammonia, phosphate and nitrate using fixed bed system. And then there are a few limitations that are found in this study, which are final inflow result obtained was not reaching the regulatory discharge limit. And then there is in need of free treatment to lower down the biochemical oxygen demand, BOD, and also the chemical oxygen demand, COD. And then it is also need to use hollow tolerant microorganism in, in this bioemulation process. Our suggestion for future improvement regarding this study, first, pre-treatment steps must be included to obtain better results. And then, we suggest of implementing electrocoagulation EC method. C is an electrochemical method which use of electrical current for the treatment of many types of wastewater without the addition of chemical coagulants. This method can successfully remove small particles of colloidal pollutant content in the wastewater. This method has gained a significant attention and become one of the reliable methods for landfill leachate treatment as it offers lots of advantages such as less production of sludge, no need of chemical use, easy to operate, less expensive, and operating in short of time. The last suggestion will be implementing advanced oxidation process AOP as a pre and post treatment before and after the biological process of bioremediation. In leachate treatment, 
the AOP method can be used as a pretreatment before the biological process and also as a post-treatment after the biological process for the removal of the non-biodegradable residual. 